Welcome into the Future Sox podcast. My name is Elijah Evans, and I am here with another special edition prospect interview. Um, I've got Jake Peppers with me today, ninth round pick this past year by the White Sox, uh, played for Jacksonville State, and is now you know within the White Sox organization, finishing up his first few months um, heading into the offseason, looking forward to next year's you know first full professional season for Jake. Welcome in. How are you? Nice to uh, nice to be here, and it's uh, it's good to be able to interact with uh, some of the White Sox fans. Yeah, man, we appreciate you coming on. Um, how how's everything with you right now? Where are you at? Where are you at right now? What are you up to? Um, as we head kind of into this, you know, off season, post minor league season, things are going good. I've been at um, been in Arizona at the spring training site for the entire time since the draft, um, and then we just uh, are about halfway through instructs camp right now, um, and then after this, after a couple of weeks, I'll head home for the off season, uh, and then prepare myself for the spring training come next year awesome man well uh we'll backtrack a little bit how was um how was the draft process for you you know as somebody who was you know in the middle of the draft it can be a really tricky process going through you know other guys we've talked to it's it's hard right you you don't know when you're going to get drafted you're kind of just playing things by ear you're waiting to hear from teams you're you're doing all these different things that go into it so how was the process for you in the draft and then once you got drafted by the white Sox, how was that kind of adjustment period yeah, without a doubt, it, it's a very stressful time, but a very like privileged and, you know, you're very grateful for for the moments and uh, for everything that comes along with it. Um, but yeah, it's it's very tough, you know, you know, where I was at in the draft, you know, like you said, it can be very, you know, hit or miss or, um, you know, you don't really know what's going to go on in certain scenarios and maybe you're going to get picked here or maybe here. Um, but um, on the second day, the White Sox picked me and I was super grateful. Um, and it was pretty cool because uh, the double A team, of course, is uh, in Birmingham, Alabama, which is about an hour and a half from where I grew up. So uh, that's pretty neat uh, having an affiliate that close. And, and plus, it's just, um, you know, I was just very grateful in the moment and, you know, appreciative of everything. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, I, I spent some time in Birmingham this year and it's a, it's a great place. You know, all the affiliates are, are really good places to be. So it's, it's good to be somewhere, you know, having that comfort level that, you know, is, is close by cannot hurt at all. Um, going back even further, what was your experience like at, at, at Jacksonville and how was kind of that, um, you know, that just process for you and just being in college and being a college, you know, college athlete, how was everything there for you prior to being drafted? Yeah, Jacksonville State, I, I really enjoyed my time there. Um, I would recommend, you know, if any of the coaches that there ever reach out or they got a new coaching staff this year, but uh, it's an unbelievable place. Um, the facilities there are, are off the charts. It's a great place. It's a small town. Uh, you, you, there's not much, uh, you know, to get yourself in trouble with. I mean, it's a great place just to go, go and, you know, get better at baseball or whatever your sport is. Um, and, and it's a good place to go and, and really hone in and not have many distractions there. Um, but I had a great time there. Coach Jim Case uh, was there all through my years, a legendary uh, coach for Jacksonville State. Uh, and he was he was amazing. He was a pitching guy uh, and really uh, taught me things and, and really helped me not only baseball wise, but uh, becoming you know a better person, things like that. It, it, he was great. That's awesome, man. Well, let's get into the pitching side of things a little bit. You were known kind of, you know, in college coming into the draft, really known for the the fastball slider combo, especially your slider, which was really successful throughout much of college. Um, I know even you worked on a changeup, you threw a changeup as your third pitch throughout college. How is your kind of, how would you describe your your pitch mix and just your style of pitching to fans who aren't that familiar with your game? Uh, the way I would kind of describe my pitching or pitching style is, is like power, power pitching, um, almost like, um, you know, you may know what's coming. I know what I'm going to throw, but like, you know, good luck hit it. Um, kind of just a power approach, um, you know, really relied fastball slider. Uh, and some would say very reliever style. Um, and a lot of the way I pitch is, but um, I, I, for most of my career, I've had more success starting games, um, especially um, in small, like relief outings. Um, I really only relied on fastball slider. Uh, and so a lot of, you know, people just assume that was kind of what, you know, what I was, you know, what I went with. But, you know, through longer outings and longer starts, I was able to really get into uh, more of a change up three pitch mix that I really didn't use relieving because I felt like I really didn't need it. But, um, you know, I would just definitely say power, power style pitching, um, you know, gear up, you know, let's go one on one, you know, that kind of approach. 
Yeah, that's really interesting. You said that about, you know, relieving and starting and kind of it's it's common, you know, with relievers where you can you can work with two pitches if you're confident in them. And then if you're looking to start, you often need to add that change up or, you know, a cut or a curveball, whatever it might be. So what is your now that you're with the White Sox organization, are you training in more of a starter regimen, more of a reliever kind of style or a little bit of both right now? I've been run, I've been running in the, the starter routines, um, really. Uh, the goals of the week. So I throw most recently I've been throwing every Tuesday. Um, and so basically, you know, throwing Tuesday and then bullpens on Friday. And so during those, we're kind of honing in on, you know, more usage of the changeup and then um, very um, light work. We've been doing a lot of stuff with a fourth pitch, a curveball. Um, but it's not really a pitch right now that you could really consider to be, you know, a very, reliable pitch or something that you know could be added you know right now but definitely within the next year half a year by spring training definitely have that uh, as a fourth option um, but, de- but definitely just getting used to uh, throwing more change-ups um, and kind of figuring out where and when I need to use them because it's always been a pretty solid pitch for me I just didn't use it much so for me it's more like when should I throw it you know what what should I be looking for hitter wise like what tails is he giving me um, that, you know, sh- tells me, hey, sl- uh, change up over slider here, um, things like that. Right. That makes perfect sense. You know, as obviously like being a starter, you have to add more to that mix. Are you working on adjusting anything with your fastball or slider at all? Are you still kind of just comfortable with those continuing to work on it and then kind of working on more of that change up and curveball? Slider for we we work on different things. And then slider for me, uh, it's kind of the bread and butter. Like it it's it's not that it's perfect, but it's the pitch that super, I'm super comfortable with. I really like the movement of it. I like the grip of my hand. So that really hasn't changed much. Um, I feel like I have a good uh, mentality throwing it too. So uh, the, the slider is pretty good. But on the fastball, we're definitely um, trying to create create a little bit more ride, a little bit more, um, you know, carry on the ball. And that's something that I do, but I don't do it super consistently. So uh, some balls will be almost too seamy and some will be more of a straight ride. Uh, and so we're trying to hone in and really uh, consistently have that same fastball shape. Um, yeah. And that's been going pretty well. That makes perfect sense. That's great. Um, anything mechanically, you know, aside from your pitching, your body, your, your finishing or anything with your, your body that you're working on right now? No, uh, the delivery I have right now, um, it's pretty, it's pretty sound and very repeatable. And it's something that, um, I kind of rely on, um, and that's kind of been a staple for me. So I haven't really changed much there. The only thing body-wise is, of course, uh, adding a little bit of weight, um, adding some range of motion, things like that. But that's very basic weight room stuff. And But delivery-wise, you know, repeating the same thing I've been doing um, and kind of just a little bit better execution of pitches. Uh, and a lot of the the fastball shape we're trying to fix is a lot of it is hand angle. Like the hand angle when you let go of the ball. Uh, and so we're kind of been working on that some. That's cool. Very cool. Um, is this, you know, getting to know this, this draft class kind of just being around a lot of these other, I know guys at the, at the ACL and everything else that you've been there for the last few months. Uh, how do you feel about that? The guys in this draft class, um, you know, just getting along with them on and off the field. Yeah. The, this draft class is awesome. Um, we, we, when we first got together, uh, it was when our mini camp in Kannapolis and uh, you immediately saw a lot of connection between the guys. The guys are super cool, super enjoy to be around. Uh, it's super neat. We have so many diverse people. We have, um, you know, people from mid-majors, power fives. We have a guy from France. We have a, uh, a guy from Japan. I mean, we're a very, uh, you know, diverse group. And it's super neat to be able to learn and uh, just be around guys like that. And um, I feel like on baseball-wise, our talent, it, it, it's it's a high level of talent that I feel like we drafted. Um, I feel like everybody uh, is is very is very high level skilled, um, and I feel like a lot of our top picks are very very good, and a lot of the players we have I feel like we're overlooked. Yeah, that's I, I completely agree. And I think fans are really excited to see where this draft class goes because it's just even in, you know, two, three months, we've seen a lot of really great signs from from people throughout the group. Um, you know, shifting away from baseball a little bit, we always like to give our fans an idea to get to know you, you know, as a person, not just on the field. Is there anything um, off the field that's just a big hobby of yours? Anything you like to do, um, just activities you're into? Um, 
I don't know. Just a little background on me is I'm a, I'm a kid from a small town in Northeast Alabama of about a thousand people. So a very small town. We have one red light. Um, so I grew up in an area that's very small and you can probably hear my accent. I got a, so most people say I have a very thick country accent. Um, but that's just kind of where I'm from and how I grew up. Uh, very hardworking, uh, blue collar area. So uh, some of those, you know, work ethics and things like that are kind of built into who I am as a person. Um, and then, you know, things I do for hobbies. Uh, I like fishing. I like playing golf. Um, you know, those are mainly my two when I do my free time. Uh, but, you know, that's a little bit of a background on me. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, being from such a small town, you know, how, why baseball? What, what got you? Is there anything particularly in your life that got you into baseball and got you to where you are today? Uh, I mean, growing up, my dad, um, he always pushed me to play sports and uh, I always enjoyed playing sports. And they always told me that when I was very young, that I would always be more interested in baseball than other sports, um, you know, from T-ball on to like, you know, when I was seven, eight, nine. So I, I played my whole life. And then there was a kind of a point where I was slightly better than uh, some of the other kids. And maybe that's why my interest was more in it was because I was doing better in it compared to other sports. Um, and then I, I was a little bit of a head, but from where I was from, I was ahead of people in my small town, but not really uh, across the state or in the Southeast or anything like that. Um, and then when it got uh, late high school, I had a couple offers uh, to so a couple small division one schools and I ended up going to Jacksonville state. Uh, and then when I got to school, I immediately made a lot of jumps and a lot of progress as soon as I got there. And, and probably a lot of that is, is just structure. So like where I came from, there wasn't much structure in baseball. A lot of it was do it on your own or um, you have to, there's not many resources being from such a small town. And so I felt like when I got to a place that had a lot of resources that that's when I was able to make a quick jump. Yeah, that's very cool. Appreciate you kind of sharing that, that story from just your, your evolution as a player um, going into, you know, this off season, do you have, we talked a little bit already about your, your physical development. Is there, what's your routine, like kind of moving forward after you're in instructs right now, but then what is the rest of this winter prior to, you know, February spring training look like for you? Definitely going to take a couple of weeks off from throwing maybe one or two weeks yeah. and then lightly toss for another month or so. I've been going probably full go since probably beginning of January. So uh, some time off will be nice. Um, and then besides that, weight room stuff is going to be the major, the major factor, gaining a little bit of weight, putting on a little bit of mass, um, while also continuing, you know, some of, some of the things I do great is range of motion and flexibility. So while gaining that weight and mass while can, maintaining uh, the amount of flexibility and um, range of motion that I have is probably the direction to be going. Yeah, that's awesome. What do you uh, what do you have to say? This is we'll wrap on this. What do you have to say uh, going into 2024? You know, looking at just the future of the whole White Sox farm system. Um, anything you want to share with fans or just your your take on, you know, the future? I feel like this whole fall I've been uh, since I've got drafted. Uh, I've been really, you know, putting great work in and working on the small things uh, that in a long season, which my league seasons are, is where uh, you really excel. And so I'm super excited for my first year next year uh, and really uh, get to put on for the um, all the organizations that hopefully I'm a part of and I'm excited to win some games. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, we really appreciate you coming on and uh, giving people a chance to get to know you. Appreciate it. Thank you.